So today we'll discuss why angiotensin II receptor blocker is used in diabetic nephropathy. So what, what is basically diabetic nephropathy? If you want to define diabetic nephropathy, then first you have to tell that you have a diabetes, right? You have uncontrolled diabetes proved by very elevated level of blood sugar, or blood glucose uh, in your blood. Second, you have elevated serum creatinine, right? This elevated serum creatinine level indicates that your kidney is not functioning properly or the nephron of the kidney is not are not functioning properly. And third uh, thing but not the least, that is that that is presence of protein or albumin in the urine. This is very important, presence of protein or albumin in the urine. And obviously, if you have to uh, say that this elevated serum creatinine level is due to diabetes, then you have to perform a kidney biopsy and finding some sclerosis, nodular sclerosis or diffuse sclerosis of the glomerulus in kidney biopsy, right? So these are some features of diabetic nephropathy. Now, what is happening in diabetic nephropathy? You can see this is the afferent arteriole. This is the glomerular capillary. This is the Bowman's capsule, Bowman's space. And this is the efferent arteriole. You all, we all know that blood first comes through the afferent arteriole. From the afferent arteriole, blood comes into the glomerulus, right? Then blood circulates through the glomerulus. And the, from the glomerulus, blood passes through the efferent arteriole, right? And from the efferent arteriole, blood ultimately passes through the peritubular capillary or vasa recta. But today's our main concentration should be on efferent arteriole. What happening in diabetes, in diabetes, there is narrowing of the efferent arteriole, right? There's narrowing of this efferent arteriole. So why the efferent arteriole in diabetes gets narrowed? Efferent arteriole is basically an arteriole. If you see the cross section of an efferent arteriole, it has three layers. It has tunica intima, composed of endothelial layer, single layer of endothelial cell, then tunica media, composed of a smooth muscle, and tunica adventitia, com composed of connective tissue. Right? It, efferent arteriole has these three layers. And what happened in diabetes, there is elevated level of blood glucose. And this increased level of blood glucose injure this endothelial cell. They injured this endothelial cell. When this high concentration of blood glucose injures this endothelial cell, what happened in the serum or plasma, you know that there's a lot of plasma proteins. In the serum or plasma, you know that there are a lot of plasma proteins. And these plasma proteins leaks through this endothelial cell. And this plasma protein that are present in the serum, from the serum, they crosses this endothelial cell and deposit it in the wall of the arteriole, right? The protein leaks through this endothelial cell and deposit it in the wall of the arteriole. When this plasma protein deposited in the wall of the arteriole, when this plasma protein deposited in the wall of the arteriole, right? This plasma protein deposited in the wall of the arteriole and ultimately this arteriolar lumen gets narrowed this is called hyaline arteriolar sclerosis due to injury of the endothelial cell there's leakage of plasma protein from plasma into the wall of the arteriole and when this plasma protein leaks from plasma into the wall of the arteriole they deposit it in the wall of the arteriole and the wall of the arteriole ultimately becomes thicker and the lumen of the arteriole, right? The lumen of the arteriole become narrow. The diameter of the arteriole become narrow. This is how in uncontrolled diabetes, the efferent arteriole become narrow, right? This is the mechanism how efferent arteriole is narrowed in diabetes. So what happened if, what is the problem if efferent arteriole becomes narrow, right? If this efferent arteriole becomes narrow, Look, if this efferent arteriole becomes narrow, blood comes through the efferent arteriole, right? Blood comes through the efferent arteriole. It comes into the glomerulus. And when it try to pass this efferent arteriole from the glomerulus, 
it is difficult for blood to pass the effluent arterial because because effluent arterial becomes narrow so what happened blood comes through the efferent arterial and blood cannot pass easily from glomerulus through this efferent arterial so blood what happened the blood will accumulate in the glomerulus the blood will accumulate in the glomerulus when the blood is accumulated in the glomerulus there is in blood volume in the glomerulus goes up blood volume in the glomerulus goes up and when the blood volume in the glomerulus goes up the pressure of blood in the glomerulus goes up so blood pressure in the glomerulus goes up and this is called intraglomerular hypertension so in diabetes there is narrowing of the efferent arterial and when there is narrowing of the efferent arterial blood cannot pass from glomerulus through the efferent arterial so easily so blood will accumulate in the glomerulus and this blood leads to increase in blood volume and when this uh, blood volume in the glomerulus goes high this increased blood that is now present in the glomerulus creates very high pressure in the wall of the glomerulus so in the wall of the glomerulus blood pressure become very high this is called interglomerular hypertension and this increased pressure increased amount of pressure that are post in the wall of the glomerulus activate mesangial cell so there is some connective tissue cell in the glomerular around surrounding the glomerular capillary or glomerulus this is called mesangial cell and this high interglomerular pressure activate mesangial cell and when mesangial cell is activated when the mesangial cell is activated this mesangial cell leads to production of connective tissue matrix or connective tissue matrix and when this mesangial cell produce connective tissue matrix there is deposition of this connective tissue in, in the glomerulus and ultimately there is sclerosis of the glomerulus this glomerulus become fibrosed this there is fibrosis of the glomerulus or there is sclerosis of the glomerulus so this glomerulus become fibrosed and sclerosed right so when there is fibrosis and sclerosis of the glomerulus this glomerulus become non-functional so glomerulus become non-functional and when glomerulus become non-functional there is a uh, loss of function of the entire nephron loss of function of entire nephron so there is loss of function of entire nephron this is how in diabetes the there is progressive loss of nephron so what happened in diabetes right in diabetes uncontrolled diabetes there is hyperglycemia and this increased blood glucose injure your endothelial cells of efferent arterial and when endothelial cells of efferent arterial is injured protein, protein enters from plasma into the wall of efferent arterial and when protein enters into the wall of efferent arterial there is progressive narrowing of the lumen of efferent arterial again i have to repeat progressive narrowing of the lumen of efferent arterial and when there's narrowing of efferent arterial blood cannot pass easily from glomerulus through the efferent arterial right so blood will accumulate in the glomerulus and this accumulated blood will create high pressure in the glomerulus and this leads to increased pressure of blood in the glomerulus or we can say increase hydrostatic pressure inside the glomerulus and this increased pressure or increased tension in the wall of glomerular capillary activates surrounding mesangial cells and this mesangial cell produce matrix or connective tissue materials and these matrix or uh, leads to fibrosis or sclerosis of the glomerulus and progressive fibrosis and sclerosis of the glomerulus leads to loss of function of entire nephron that is how you lose nephron in diabetic diabetic nephropathy progressively and when you lose nephron your kidney function deteriorates this leads to progression of diabetic nephropathy so this is the basic mechanism so what is the pathogenesis of diabetic nephropathy the pathogenesis of diabetic nephropathy is narrowing of efferent arterial so what does angiotensin 2 receptor blocker do 
angiotensin 2 receptor blocker dilates your efferent arteriole. So why angiotensin 2 receptor blocker dilates your efferent arteriole? For understanding this, again, we have to go to the cross-section of efferent arteriole. This is the cross-section of efferent arteriole, and this is endothelial cell, tunica intima, and there is tunica media, and then there is tunica adventitia. In the tunica media, we have this smooth muscle. We have this smooth muscle cell in the tunica media, right? We have this smooth muscle cell in the tunica media, and smooth muscle in the tunica media of efferent arteriole contain receptor for angiotensin 2. They contain angiotensin 2 receptor. And when angiotensin 2, angiotensin 2, binds with angiotensin 2 receptor on the smooth muscle of the tunica media of efferent arteriole, this smooth muscle undergo constriction. This smooth muscle undergo constriction. So when this smooth muscle undergo constriction, there is narrowing of the lumen of efferent arteriole. There is narrowing of the lumen. So what does this angiotensin to do? So in the tunica media of this efferent arteriole, there is a smooth muscle and this smooth muscle, this smooth muscle contain a lot of receptor for angiotensin 2, right? This smooth muscle contain a lot of receptor for uh, this angiotensin 2. And when this receptor is stimulated, the efferent arteriole undergo narrowing. When this smooth muscle is stimulated, the efferent arteriole undergo narrowing. So angiotensin 2 causes contraction or narrowing of this efferent arteriole. So it actually aggravates the diabetic nephropathy or process uh, that lead to diabetic nephropathy. Angiotensin 2 actually, uh, by causing con constriction of the efferent arteriole, it increases the pressure inside the glomerulus and increases the sclerosis, 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 sclerotic process of the glomerulus, right? So it aggravates the diabetic nephropathy. So what does this angiotensin receptor? To receptor angiotensin receptor blocker do angiotensin receptor blocker blocks this receptor on the arterial or smooth muscle right the blocks this receptor for angiotensin 2 on the efferent arterial on the efferent arterial there's a lot of lot of angiotensin 2 receptor and angiotensin 2 receptor blocker blocks this angiotensin 2 receptor the block so these are angiotensin receptor blocker suppose and they blocks this angiotensin 2 receptor this is angiotensin 2 uh, angiotensin 2 receptor and they blocks this receptor so angiotensin 2 cannot bind with its receptor when angiotensin 2 cannot bind with its receptor there is dilatation of efferent arteriole so what happened when there is dilatation of efferent arteriole Look, blood comes through the efferent arteriole, then it goes through the glomerulus, and when the efferent arteriole is dilated, blood can easily pass through the efferent arteriole. So when blood from the glomerulus can easily pass through the efferent arteriole, blood volume in the glomerulus goes down, and when the blood volume in the glomerulus goes down, there is decreased hydrostatic pressure or decreased blood pressure inside this glomerular capillary. Right when the blood volume goes down, there will be decreased hydrostatic pressure. When there is decreased hydrostatic pressure, there is decreased activation of mesangial cell. When there is decreased activation of mesangial cell, or mesangial cell uh, cannot become activated, there is no sclerosis or fibrosis of the glomerulus. No sclerosis or fibrosis of the glomerulus. So angiotensin II uh, leads to protection protects the glomerulus angiotensin 2 blocker sorry angiotensin 2 receptor blocker protects the glomerulus from from fibrosis and when it protects the glomerulus from fibrosis it actually protects the entire nephron so it actually protects the entire nephron so we can say angiotensin 2 receptor blocker protects nephron so it prevents the progression of diabetic nephropathy so what we can say we can say angiotensin 2 receptor blocker blocks angiotensin 2 receptor on the smooth muscle of efferent arteriole when angiotensin 2 receptor on the smooth muscle of efferent arteriole is blocked there is dilatation 
angiotensin 2 cannot bind with its receptor and this leads to dilatation of efferent arteriole and dilatation of efferent arteriole leads to easy passage of blood from glomerulus through the efferent arteriole so on the on, uh, same word is blood from the glomerulus can easily pass through this efferent arteriole when blood from glomerulus can easily pass through efferent arteriole there is decreased blood volume inside the glomerulus and when there is decreased blood volume inside the glomerulus hydrostatic pressure inside the glomerular capillary goes down and when hydrostatic pressure inside the glomerular capillary is decreased there is no activation of mesangial cell and when mesangial cell is not activated there is no for, or no production of fibrous tissue or matrix so there is no glomerulosclerosis or there is no sclerosis of the glomerulus so this leads to preservation of glomerulus or this leads to preservation of the valuable nephron so angiotensin 2 uh, receptor blocker actually preserves nephron so arb should be used in a patient who has diabetes plus serum elevated serum creatine level so serum creatine level particularly from 1.4 to 3.6 above 3.6 some persons say that uh, there is risk of hyperkalemia so i say here that uh, between serum creatine 1.4 to 3.6 we can we can use and we should use or we must use angiotensin 2 receptor blocker because this is this angiotensin 2 receptor blocker actually preserve the nephron suppose a patient has uh, a patient born with uh, uh, 2 million nephron and by the time uh, of diabetic nephropathy he or she has lost 1 million nephron now he or she has just 1 million nephron and to protect or preserve that that amount of nephron in a diabetic patient you have to give him or her ARB or angiotensin receptor blocker and this is the magic drug so thank you very much